Hi, I'm Jeff Wilkinson of Wilkinson Construction Consultants, and in this video, we're setting out our response to Dame Hackett's report and how we see the future of building control really should be structured going forwards. Dame Hackett's report is an excellent piece of work, and it's something that we are very supportive of. But we are aware that there's a campaign at the moment for what's called 100% Hackett. And that does give us a number of concerns because we don't think that the Hackett report actually goes far enough. And here's a series of reasons why we think that that's the case and our recommendations as to what should happen in order to solve those problems. Our first concern is that Dame Hackett's report has been limited to buildings of 10 storeys or more. Now, that provides a whole series of concerns because it would create a two-tier system. And that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Dame Hackett is absolutely right when she says that we need a complete change of culture within the UK construction industry. But we're not going to achieve that if we limit those buildings that are covered by the new plan to those over 10 storeys. In fact, we could end up with some quite bizarre things happening where contractors start to look to build buildings of nine and three quarter uh, stories in height specifically to avoid that. It will also mean that we will start to find that existing buildings um, could end up being demolished and rebuilt below that level to avoid those kind of rules. Now that kind of thing is exactly the kind of thing that the residents of these buildings do not want. What they want is for their buildings to be brought up to the necessary standards not to be demolished and rebuilt just to avoid compliance with these rules. So we think it's essential First of all, that all buildings are covered by the new regime, not just those over 10 storeys. The second of Dame Hackett's recommendations is that she sets up a joint competent authority. Now, this by its definition suggests that we have multiple incompetent authorities at the moment, and that's something we could probably all agree with. But what we do need to ensure is that the new authority has a clear role and to be sure what that role actually is. Our vision for the JCA would be that it is the enforcement body. And I think it's important not to forget some of the previous work that's gone on when we've looked at the future of building rigs. For example, the future of building control implementation plan that was produced in 2009 set out a whole series of mechanisms by which you could improve the enforcement process. These included things like on the spot fines, for example. Now, a lot of the reticence to uh, implement that was because the local authorities had to provide both the service and the enforcement role. And clearly that creates a conflict of interest. And that's something which can't be allowed to continue. What we need, therefore, is an independent uh, joint competent authority that has that enforcement role and that actually has teeth because for all of the rules and the proposals within the Hackett Report, nothing will change unless there are some consequences behind those proposals. And it's essential that we actually have those in place. And that we see is primarily the role of the Joint Competent Authority. We'd also like to see that the Joint Competent Authority oversees and guides the way forward in future. So for example, they take overall responsibility for publishing guidance and producing documents because we have concerns also about the way in which guidance has been produced up until now. In particular, one of the other recommendations in the report is that the industry produces its own guidance. Now, whilst we acknowledge the fact that the industry are predominantly the experts in this field, it has led to things like the Building Control Alliance Guidance Note 16, which gave guidance on combustible cladding. And that is probably the root cause of why the combustible cladding ended up being placed on Grenfell Tower itself. Now this is a real concern because unless someone gets to grips with the rules and the regulations themselves and produces the guidance correctly, we could end up with no end of problems with individual organisations producing conflicting guidance. So we really see that the JCA could have a great role in that particular part of the field. Naturally, as approved inspectors, we also have concerns about Dame Hackett's recommendation that only the JCA should be able to deal with such buildings. The role of the approved inspector has been set out since the 1980s, and even by admission of the head of local authority building control, Paul Everall, this has delivered a massive improvement in the building control system itself and the way in which it responds to industry. 
I fully remember working in local authority building control back in the 80s and 90s. Now this was a period of time before the approved inspector system really had a chance to establish itself and there wasn't really much competition. And what we had at that point was real problems with local authorities being able to resource the necessary standards to ensure that they had inspectors to actually go out and inspect the work. I remember working for one local authority that implemented a policy of simply inspecting at commencement, foundation and completion stages. Now this missed out a massive uh, amount of the work that would actually be carried out and certainly wouldn't have addressed any of the issues that we have on Grenfell Tower itself. So it is important to ensure that we actually have the necessary resources. Cutting approved inspectors out of the system clearly would not achieve that and would actually create exactly the reverse to it. What we need to do is we need to ensure that there are more resources coming into the industry to carry out these inspections, not less. In the work that the local authority have done up until now, they've produced videos themselves. Now, this includes a really impassioned plea from Lorna Stimpson, um, who quite rightly establishes her passion for the uh, building control industry itself and, and everything that she's done in that. But she turns her focus onto competition and the fact that um, she has seen a situation where one contractor or one client has tried to determine the number of inspections that are actually being carried out and has blamed competition for that. Her argument is that because there is competition in the market, there will be someone that will actually carry out less inspections. Now, my concern is not about the competition aspect, it's about the competency aspect. She states that in this particular case, there were to be 10 inspections on a £6 million project. Now, clearly that can't be right. But equally, on Grenfell Tower, local authority building inspectors carried out, we believe, 17 inspections, and they failed to pick up any of the non-compliance issues that were actually found to have caused the problems. So it isn't simply about the numbers of inspections, it's about the competency of the inspectors, when they're inspecting and what they're actually inspecting when they carry those inspections out. So what we really need from the system is clear guidance about the competencies of inspectors to ensure that it's not just any old inspector that goes out, but one that has the necessary experience to carry out the specific type of work and specific type of inspections relevant to your project. In particular, we would like to see clear guidance that sets out exactly what an inspection report should include. So should it include photographs? Should there be checklists? Now these are areas where both the industry and government can come together, perhaps to produce a simple app, so we have consistency in that inspection format itself, and that everyone is working to the same basis. By providing a level playing field and perhaps setting a minimum number of inspections, well, a better minimum than we currently have, which actually is just a simple one inspection, we could then ensure that we have consistency of interpretation and improve the standards of inspections throughout. By doing so, we end up with a level playing field and the issue of competition becomes far less important. One of the other concerns that we have about the report is that it fails to deal with some of the issues of conflicts of interest. Now, these have grown uh, exponentially over recent years and we've seen no end of situations where these conflicts come about. For example, a local authority could actually be both the owner of a building, it could be commissioning the work, it could be involved in the design of the building, and it could be involved in the approval system itself. Under those circumstances, it's highly unlikely that the local authority would actually take enforcement action against itself, and that gives us great concerns. That's why we support the concept of a JCA, but that has to be a separate government body and not part of the local authority itself. But there are also issues as well about conflicts of interest for approved inspectors. And I think we need to be open and honest about that. We see that there are approved inspectors out there that are offering a range of additional services. Now these can be simple things like offering testing services. Uh, they could be uh, providing SAP calculations. They could be undertaking warranty inspections as well. Now all of these things present potential conflicts of interest as they're trying to cross sell additional services. So for us it's vital that whatever the system comes out with in the future that we have the removal of these conflicts of interest. An independent 
building control body should be exactly that. It should be independent. There should be no circumstances whatsoever where a building control body is submitting any document to itself for checking. We don't want to see a system of self-regulation. We want to see an effective system of regulation and having competent checks in place. Now, an earlier report, the More Homes Fewer Complaints report that was produced in 2016 set out in that a requirement that uh, warranty inspections should be undertaken independently of building control inspections. So the same body shouldn't be providing both services. This would give you two sets of eyes on the same project. And that's something we very much support. A requirement that any warranties are actually independent of the building control body. That would be a great step forward. But we'd go further. We'd like to see a requirement that all building projects are actually provided with a warranty. That would ensure that we don't have a situation as we do at the moment where there are arguments about the costs of defects and putting those right at the end of the project. If we had an effective warranty system in place, we wouldn't have a situation where residents are faced with the kind of issues they are at the moment, where they're faced with huge bills for putting right things that are blatantly wrong with the building regulations in the first instance. We'd also like to see a strengthening of the um, Building Act itself and Section 36, which gives you the penalties. What we'd like to see is a requirement that a local authority or as it would be now, the Joint Competent Authority, have the powers to step in. So if there is a life safety issue, we don't end up with the kind of nonsense that we have at the moment with contractors and owners and individual residents all arguing over who pays for the work. The work would be paid for and people would be safe straight away by virtue of that enforcement power. The argument about who pays for it comes later. We can sort that out afterwards, but let's prioritize <laughs> compliance and people's life safety first and foremost. If we can get that right, we're really making steps forward. One of the things we think is a huge step forward and it's something that we've been campaigning for for years and also goes back to the Future of Building Control Implementation Plan is the removal of the building notice route. In fact, we'd go further and we'd very much support a requirement that you cannot legally start work on site without having an approved plan in place. Now we can have a discussion about exactly what the content of that approved plan may or may not be and we could perhaps come up with a set of national building specifications that small contractors could say that they're going to comply with and not have to submit additional details. But without a set of detailed plans, you don't know what it is that you're actually going to be building. We end up with a bizarre situation where a contractor can be literally making it up as they go along and the building control body has to try and work out what it is that, that's going to be produced at the end of the project. Now, no other industry works like that. No industry decides that it's going to make a car but not know what that car looks like when it rolls off the end of the production line. So how can you ensure that that is actually a compliant building at the end of it? It makes life incredibly difficult. So we absolutely support the requirement that all projects should have an approved plan, not just those over 10 stories, and we would also argue not just those in a high risk category. We would remove the option of a building notice and we would provide a situation instead where there is a requirement that all projects have an approved plan before you commence. To do otherwise would be a legal offence and would result in a fine. And that's somewhere where the JCA could step in and stop this happening. We would also insist that prior to a building being occupied, you must have a final certificate or a certificate of occupation from the building control body in your hand before it is legal to occupy. That avoids a situation that we currently have where uh, contractors and owners toss up whether or not it's actually in their financial interest to occupy early or later. There is no question that you cannot occupy until the building is safe to do so. We would not have that situation in any other industry. So in conclusion, we strongly support the recommendations of the Hackett Report, but what we don't do is support the current plan for 100% Hackett. 100% Hackett is simply not enough. We need to go further. We understand why local authorities are um, looking to do that and we would love to see a situation where only licensed bodies 
can actually undertake the building control function. Now that would be a massive change for local authorities themselves, but you'd have the fallback position of the joint competent authority if those local authorities couldn't provide the necessary competent staff to meet the licensing requirements. So what we would like to see as well as one final recommendation is that there is a licensing body for all building control organisations, whether they're local authority or approved inspector, and they all are monitored annually and that they all have a proper complaint system in place. And this would ensure the competency of individuals and the organisations that are signing these buildings off. So there we have it. That's all of the points that we'd like to raise at this stage about the Hackett Report and hopefully this can drive forward some real changes in the way the building control system actually works at the moment and prevent another disaster like Grenfell Tower. Now this is probably a once in a lifetime opportunity to have an effect so we appeal to the likes of James Brokenshaw to listen to what we're saying now and to take action that we need to today. Let's not have a situation where as we have with the previous reports the recommendations are simply placed on a shelf. This is not the time to do that. This is a time for the industry to step up, to make real change and to adopt a system that we can rely upon for years and years to come. One that's effective and delivers proper building control services.